Over 30 minutes of useless zombie facts. Let's go. On Kino der Toten, there is a way to get to high rounds without having to deal with the Nova Crawlers. There is a way to make sure that they don't spawn in and you can still progress through the rounds. All you're going to have to do is make sure the MPL room door going to the alley remains closed. Also, you want to turn on power, but once you have turned on power, never go back to spawn. As long as you don't head back there to get like quick revive or get the pack a punch, Nova Crawlers will not spawn in in that area. And then after that, all you have to do is do the strategy and the fire room trap and you can get to some pretty high rounds before you actually have to maybe get the pack a punch or run out into the stage area where they'll start spawning in there. But for a pretty long time, you can kind of just train in the fire trap room and not have to worry about Novas whatsoever. Now, one of the biggest innovations that Zombies has probably ever gave to Call of Duty in general is going to sound stupid, but it came from the developers themselves, and that is Ponytail Tech. I, I want to ask you guys a little bit about, I mean, clearly Zombies took so much from the main game. What has Zombie Mode given back? Has there been anything that Zombies Mode has given back? Ponytail Tech. <laughs> Ponytail Tech, that's right, you heard it here first. If you look in Call of the Dead, uh, there's a female character with a ponytail and it moves around. That was developed on Zombies by Zombie uh, tech Technical. First playable female character. And, and, and a first playable female character, there's that. But ponytail tech, seriously. And we're going to bring that in a big way, it's awesome. Zombies are responsible for ponytail tech, which I think we appreciate that. Now, on Ascension, sometimes if you stare long enough at this TV, you'll see this video. Oh, sorry. Didn't see you there. I was too busy enjoying this luxurious bath, but do you know what I love more than this luxurious bath and my rubber ducky? Today's video sponsor, Hawked. Hawked is a free online PvPVE extraction shooter where you're dropped on a mysterious island where monsters hold very powerful relics of a lost civilization. Your job as a renegade is to survive against all the other players and escape with as much treasure as humanly possible. But not only do you have to outsmart and outgun rival renegades and disciples, you're also going to have to solve a variety of puzzles and dodge deadly booby traps. All while you traverse this island filled with lush plains, jungles, and ancient ruins. And you're doing all of this to plunder as many of the island's treasures as humanly possible. Gather weapons and ammo, upgrade and combine your gear, employ special abilities and tech, and wield mystical artifacts. So if that sounds like a lot of fun to you, which it absolutely should, PC's early access has already begun. So download the game via the link in the description for free. Hawk also has something brewing pretty big beneath the waves. I'm talking huge, extremely long underneath the water. Your mom cannot handle how big this actually is. And that would be the Renegade Rally. Players will be able to join the Renegade Rally by registering on Hawk's website. Everyone who signs up is guaranteed seven days of grail plus premium status with better rewards becoming available as more players join the rally. And at the end of the Renegade Rally, a raffle will take place amongst all the participants with valuable rewards, including a lifetime supply of premium currency. Hawked will also have issue number one of the Renegade Pass available for purchase. The pass is going to have a wide selection of exclusive items such as weapon skins, themed outfits, customization items, and much more. So like I said earlier, early access has just begun on PC, and PlayStation and Xbox releases are going to be coming by early next year, with the crossplay open beta test for all platforms coming in December. So check out Hawked, use the link down below in the description, support my sponsors for supporting me, and back to the video. Now one thing that Treyarch loves to do is watch us try to complete their easter eggs when they first come out. I mean, they were definitely in Noah or Mr. Roth Waffle's stream when they were completing the Shadows of Evil and Horizon Drag easter eggs, but one little known fact is that Treyarch actually likes to place bets on when we will finish the easter eggs. Are you going to tell them about the bet? Oh, about the bet? Oh yeah, so we, uh, you know, we've got, uh, the, we started doing side quests on the map, as you right. guys know, and uh, we started it with uh, Zombie in Ascension. Uh, where you have to uh, do all these tasks and you eventually finish it, you get a you know an achievement Stupid and stuff. Gersh. And so we have we start started in my office. I had my whiteboard up, and uh, everyone would take a bet on what day they would uh, complete the side quest. And so I think Ascension was two and a half days, something like that. And it's gone Are they down. Here? It took what it? six hours? You guys are right there. It took six hours to complete this new one. Yeah. Ridiculous, but we, we had a big board this time around and everyone takes a bet on how long it's going to take the community to uh, 
finish the side quest in each so, map. So that must be, then you've got to go back to your whiteboard and come up with ideas that are harder and more esoteric. Well, and and the, the hard part about it is that now, when we first started, people didn't know about it, so it takes sure. them a while. And now we've got these guys who 2 a.m. rolls around, map packs released on, yeah. on Xbox, and... They've got a team of four that these guys have been practicing, you know, and then they just, they're they just swarm playing in. straight. They'll, they'll be tweeting me and they'll go, hey, dude, we completed the first part of the thing. I'm like, it's been out for five minutes. Yeah. How can you guys it's, possibly it's, have done this? It's so much fun those days, though, because we're, we're all sitting around a computer refreshing various uh, websites just to, just to check and see, and it's just cool to see how excited the community gets over it. Now, out of our four main characters in Black Ops 1, they all tend to break the fourth wall. Nikolai has a couple good ones. Damn, I keep forgetting to update my Facebook page. This gun is perfect for round one. But by far, the one who does it the most has to be Tank Dempsey, and here's just some of my favorites. Okay, player, you got about 20 seconds till I show up in your living room and have words with you. Or until I say another out of ammo line. Get the hint! Ow, my shins! When's Treyarch inventing shin armor? Hey, look at that. No power. Wait, does power even make sense in an ancient temple? Seriously, Treyarch? Seriously? Everyone thinks Tack is boring. And maybe he is. But you gotta have that one stale guy to make the rest of us a little bit cooler. This is like waiting for the midnight release! I thought we'd have a new objective by now. But no! You guys just never give the community what they want! I got the achievement. Yeah, yeah. All right. A weapon more random than Nikolai's script. And less barfing. Fun. Hey, player! Focus! We need headshots, man! Oh my gosh! They hid yet another song! Where do they get these original ideas from? Hey, Treyarch! I solved your stupid objective! Hey, player, if you'd look at your score, you'd see we ain't doing very well. And it's your fault! Damn, keep forgetting to update my Facebook page. Check it out. A new ditty by Elena and Kevin. Thank you, Treyarch. What? Are they gonna put a music Easter egg in every map now? Another Easter egg? Ha! <laughs> How do they do it? Hey, Treyarch, can we get a new objective, please? Hey, player! Drop the chips and get me some ammo! Finally, I get to shoot at stuff during one of these side quests. The Zombie Map 5 is a very good map to teach yourself how to manipulate zombie spawns. Because 5 isn't really a training map, and a lot of the high round strategies really do rely on manipulating where the zombies come in from. For early rounds, one of the best examples is down here in the labs. If you're in this room and you're close enough to this door, zombies will only spawn in front of you. And this makes for a very good camping spot for early rounds with the ray gun. Now this is not viable for high high rounds, but it is a fast way to breeze through the early rounds. And as long as you're close enough to this door, zombies will never spawn in behind you. And this is a very good way to kind of teach yourself on how to manipulate certain spawn areas. Now, if you're wanting to go to high rounds on five, that is when it gets a little bit harder. So up here in the spawn room area, there's going to be six barricades, but only four of them are going to be used at a time. And to get to high rounds, the best strategy that you can do is to make sure zombies don't come through this barricade and this barricade. And to make sure that that happens, you want to keep resetting their spawns. And in order to reset their spawns, you either have to take the lower elevator, either take it up or down, or take a teleporter during a bonfire sale. When you do either of those things, the zombie spawns in the spawn room are going to get randomized. And you basically want to keep doing that until you get the correct barricades that you want. So like I said, 5 is not a good training simulator, but it is a very good tool to use to help learn how to manipulate certain zombie spawns and to get that extra edge you need to get to high rounds. Because a lot of high round strategies really don't revolve too much on training as much as manipulating where the zombies are coming from and where they're going. One of the coolest parts about Black Ops 1 definitely has to be the Pentagon Thief. He is probably one of the most interesting boss zombies we have ever seen. In modern zombies nowadays, you just have your standard big zombie come and kill you. That's really all you have. But Black Ops 1 was truly innovative with what they were trying to give you. And the Pentagon Thief is one of the best examples. Very similar to Hellhounds, he will spawn in every couple rounds, but instead of your normal zombie MO, he doesn't want to hurt you. He's not even going to damage you. All he wants to do is steal your weapons. So once he spawns in, if you're playing solo, he just naturally will go after you. But if you're playing co-op, only the player that he is chasing will be able to see him. Everybody else will only see a red mist. And the only way you will be able to see him is if he is chasing you or if he has already stolen your weapon. 
but like I said, once he does spawn in, he tries to take your weapon. If you can manage to kill him before he takes anyone's weapon, you will be rewarded with a max ammo and a bonfire sale, and that will make Pack-a-Punch 1,000 points. So this would be very, very beneficial on early rounds. Let's say he manages to take your weapon, but you're able to kill him before he disappears. You will be rewarded with a fire sale and a max ammo and your weapon back. Let's say you didn't have the weapons to deal with him, he takes your gun and he disappears. You will only be rewarded with a max ammo and he will take your gun forever and you're going to have to probably go spin the box again to get whatever you lost. So there are numerous ways to deal with this guy, but there are a couple lesser known things that I think are just as interesting. Say the Pentagon Thief already took one of your weapons, now you're down to just one. And say you just never rebought another gun. The next time he spawns in, if he takes that weapon, you will be left with nothing. You're not going to have anything but your knife and your grenades, and it's up to you to figure that one out for yourself. And I really like how Treyarch thought of that, because like, who would ever just not buy a second gun between those rounds? Like, everybody naturally is going to buy another gun, but say you're a madman and you didn't want to, and he steals it? Now you're left with nothing, and this is one of the very rare instances in zombies where you can literally have nothing. Another little interesting fact about him is that if you have the death machine and he spawns in, he can still steal your gun, but he's just going to take the death machine, and the death machine icon will disappear and you'll still have all your other guns. So if you can luck out and get a death machine, and he can just take that instead of taking your other guns, that's good for everyone I guess. And if you somehow down yourself during the Pentagon Thief round, maybe you're trying to like five head and think, well, if I'm down, he's just going to steal my last stand pistol. Think again, because when you are down, he will steal the last gun you had. So don't do that because you're going to be severely disappointed. And there's just an extra cool thing that they made about the Pentagon Thief is the more damage you do to him, the more he's going to start limping and like kind of look like he's suffering a little bit. It looks like he's actually taking damage and getting shot because he starts off just fully running and then the more damage you do to him the more he looks like he's actually about ready to die and i think that's a little interesting detail that not a lot of people really give enough credit to now very similar to kino five also has damned constantly playing in the background And this isn't really something that I should point out, but I, I, I like it. The elevator music. It's so nice and just peaceful and tranquil. It just feels like a nice little break jumping into the elevator and just, you know, chilling with some calm elevator music and then probably getting out and then immediately dying. Now I don't know why, but I always held a soft spot for Ascension's trailer. It's so unique and different from a lot of the other trailers we've seen that I just really like it. Welcome to Ascension, a place full of uncanny challenges, so you better use your brain, or it will end up being eaten by natives like these. And yes, you are correct, these are authentic Russian cosmonaut monkey zombies. So put an end to animal testing by sending their hairy asses into the atmosphere. Ascension, one of the five new maps in the Call of Duty Black Ops First Strike content pack. Now, Ascension also gave us another very unique boss zombie. We have the Space Monkeys, and they are, again, similar to dogs. They have their own special round, but their health scales, so they're very, very tanky, and they are also one of the only things in the entire zombie history that can survive a thunder gun shot. But space monkeys don't really want to hurt you. They can hurt you, but they mainly want to steal your perks. And how that works is every perk has a set amount of health. Every perk has 100 health points. And the monkeys will inflict one point of damage every time they go apeshit on it. But that is only if you are far away. When the player gets closer to the monkeys, they will do 8 points of damage every time. So the farther you are away, the less damage they are going to do to that perk. And once that perk's health hits zero, that's when you lose it. So that's why sometimes it seems like they really speed it up and take the perk right when you get there, instead of them taking their sweet time on stamina up because who's ever over at stamina. And also, monkeys will never come unless you have the power activated. So you can buy quick revive, but the monkeys will not spawn in until you flip that power switch. 
And you can also get a free perk from the monkeys when you don't have that area accessible. So you can get like speed cola or stamina up if you haven't opened that section of the map from the free perk drop that you get from the monkeys. Also, the monkeys are pretty resistant to claymores. They're going to be able to destroy claymores without really taking any damage unless you kind of angle the claymore. So if you put the claymores on like stairs or something, they will be able to actually damage the monkeys instead of if you were to like put them on a flat surface. If you put the claymores on a flat surface, the monkeys are just going to destroy them. And really the only thing they're good for is to slow them down. But if you find a way to angle them, that's when you'll actually start doing some damage. The monkeys are also known to toss back grenades. And even if you have PhD Flopper, if the monkeys toss back a grenade to you, that can still do damage to you. Even though you do have PhD Flopper, you will still take the explosive damage from the monkeys throwing back grenades. So be careful. Now in the official zombie storyline on October 28th, 1963, that is when the gang first gets to Kino to Toten. From Doris, Ultimus teleports to Kino. Temporal rifts occur across dimensions. In light of these developments, Monty feels obligated to step in and begins to make changes in the background across time. He helps group 935 invent perk machines. He adds chalk drawings to the walls, little nudges. Ultimus locates a lunar lander to fly to the Ascension facility. And they arrive at Ascension on November 6th, 1963. Ultimus arrives at the Soviet Cosmodrome and free Gers from the Casimir Mechanism. Richtofen recovers his diary and learns that they need the Vril device from the Siberian facility for his plan. Maintaining his ethereal form, Gersh sends them into a rift to their next destination before beginning his travels across space and time. And all while that's happening, we also have the events of Five happening at the same time. So just in case you were ever wondering how they got from Kino to Ascension, they literally flew there. Now one of the most powerful things in Black Ops 1 definitely has to be PhD Flopper. PhD Flopper is a one flop, sounds a little weird, up until round 20. And considering the fact that you can flop an endless amount of times as long as you're doing it from an elevated position, that makes PhD Flopper pretty damn powerful in the grand scheme of things. Now one of the bigger mysteries for me is the centrifuge. Why does it only ever want to help out when I do not need it? I don't think there's anything to this. I think it literally turns on at random. I tried my best to look around and see if I could find like if there was any specific thing that you have to do or walk by or if there's time and it literally just seems like it's random. Now it will kill zombies. If it manages to hit a zombie, it will kill it. So the zombie will not spawn back in and it does an infinite amount of damage and will always work, but it seems to activate completely at random and there's really no guessing when it's going to turn on. Now, OG Nikolai and Black Ops 1 zombies had many wives. Now, I know Stalingrad drank too much, imagined them all, but we're going to ignore that and pretend that they're all real because that makes this way more interesting. So, Nikolai, canonically, has had nine wives, and the first one happened to meet her end with a shotgun. Da! The same weapon I used to kill my first wife. She was bitch. You are ugly. Like first wife. Like my first wife. Useless. I used this to kill a bear once. She was my first wife. His second wife also met an end by a gun, but it wasn't a shotgun, it was a PPSH. Ah, same weapon I used to kill my second wife. It was accident. She talked too much. Oh, the electricity dancing on their corpses is so beautiful. Like second wife. His third wife was apparently a really good cook. You are like third wife, always asking for more. I have black hole. Like my third wife, we won't talk about that. <laughs> Smells like third wife's cooking. I loved it. Dempsey, I like him because he's brave. Like third wife. He's going to die one day, but he'll take many with him. Like fourth wife. Hey. Now his fourth wife, I think, is the one he probably hated the most. She took his money and ran, and he chased her down and killed her with his bare hands. First it takes my money, then it disappears. Just like my fourth wife. Oh, that smells disgusting. Like my fourth wife. She pretty, though. Pretty and smelly. Weird combo. Guess I'll have to use my bare hands, like with my fourth wife. Always talking. Shouldn't have kept them in that extra 30 seconds. Like fourth wife. Ugly kid. I have finally made it to the moon. You were wrong, fourth wife! You were wrong! Sexy weapon for sexy Russian. Most women think so, at least. Fourth wife, not so much. 
Small and powerful, like Fourth Wipe. Uh, no, they were all big. They could plow fields. His fifth wife is the one from the World at War bio that was mysteriously killed when she was cleaning an axe with her neck. The only thing we know about the sixth wife is that she had like the Gluck Gluck 9000. This thing sucks harder than sixth wife! Now Nikolai's seventh wife might be one of the only ones that lived to tell the tale. No, oh, you're much cuter now, zombie. <laughs> like seventh. Thank God, I can go home and tell Seventh Wife I now make double points! And about new girlfriend. Now the Eighth Wife, we really don't know anything about, at least there was no quotes about it in Black Ops 1. But the Ninth Wife, apparently was the one that died when they blew up the Earth. Ha <laughs> ha! Goodbye, Wife number 9! I do not think I will be able to top that one. She died when I blew up the Earth! Fun times! I will miss her. So Nikolai has had many and many of wives, but in Black Ops 1, he also has references to his sister, who he hates and thinks is a bitch. My little sister shoots better than you, Takeo. I have sister who used to make these. She's bitch. And he also has quotes for his mom. This thick like Russian bull milk mom used to drink. My mother would be proud. And also his abusive dad. Father would be proud. Ooh, I feel like young Nikolai again. Then I get beaten from father. And lastly, this quote right here makes it seem like he has a little ugly child running around out there. Shouldn't have kept them in that extra 30 seconds. Like fourth wife, ugly kid. Now, Nikolai is also pretty musically inclined. Not only does he sing 99 bottles of beer with Dempsey when they're trapped in Call of the Dead. Oh, 99 shots of vodka. 99 shots of glee. We drink for fun. It's better than rum. 99 shots of vodka for me. 98 shots of vodka. 98 shots of glee. We drink for fun. It's better than rum. 98 shots of vodka for me. 96 shots of vodka. Oh, come on. You lost count again, you dumbass. Now we gotta start again all I over. I don't like Matt. He's also been known to sing a couple other tunes. Do, do, when you wanna get up, you need a little revive. This place is too loud. Maybe if I plug my ears in hum song. Ah, fuck. And he's even referenced Jay-Z. Got 99 problems, but a gun ain't one. Da! I got 99 problems, but a bitch ain't one. And the 1980 song, I Think We're Alone Now. I think I'm alone now. There doesn't seem to be anyone around. I think we're alone now. There doesn't seem to be anyone around. Now, Ascension also does have some tricks that you can do to get to high rounds. And this one revolves around the Pack-a-Punch room. Once you get up there in rounds, you can start doing this because you kind of want to wait until the zombies really start spawning in really fast. But you start off inside the Pack-a-Punch room, and once the zombies start flooding in, you run outside into the rocket area. You want to round them all up, take them back to the Pack-a-Punch room, and as you're running back, you want to kill them, and then get inside the Pack-a-Punch room. The reason you're doing this is because when you start off in the Pack-a-Punch room, the zombies are only going to spawn in from four barriers. The two inside that room, and the two outside in the rocket area. So you're trying to control where the zombies are spawning in from, and how fast they're coming in. If you were to kill the zombies outside in the rocket area and then stay there, the zombies would spawn in from farther away, closer to Speed Cola, and you don't want that. We want them to spawn in in this area as fast as possible. So that is why once you kill them, you want to either be right next to the Pack-a-Punch room or inside of the Pack-a-Punch room, so that way when they start spawning in, it registers you as in there, and the zombies will all spawn in around you. It's little things like this that you really have to be aware of if you want to get the super high rounds. Now, do you guys want to be able to like blow your friends' minds when you're playing Black Ops 1? Because this next fact is definitely for you. Mystery box. How does it work? It's a mystery. <laughs> See what I did there? But no, the mystery box works a very specific way. The first mystery box location of the map will always roll a teddy bear by the eighth use. So that means you got eight uses on the first mystery box location before you get a teddy bear. And then once you move to a new location, the first four rolls, you have a 0% chance of getting a teddy bear. Rolls four through eight, you have a 15% chance of getting a teddy bear. Rolls 8 through 12 have a 30% chance, and anything past 12, you have a 50% chance of getting a teddy bear. So it's not completely random every single time. The more times you hit a box at a certain location, 
the better and better your chances are of getting a teddy bear. And wonder weapons aren't really as rare as one would think. For rounds 5 through 10, wonder weapons have about a 15% chance of getting rolled, and from 10 plus, you have about a 20% chance. Also, monkey bombs in the mystery box are pretty interesting because the more people that get monkey bombs, the less of a chance that you're going to have to actually get them. So if you're playing with four players, somebody gets a monkey bomb, that means your chance of getting a monkey bomb just lessened by one. And if somebody else gets a monkey bomb, that means it's becoming more and more rare. I'm not saying that you can't get them. I'm just saying that the more people that have monkey bombs, the chance of one popping up becomes a little bit more rare. Let's switch gears here and do a little bit of storyline information. Let's learn a little bit more about our drunk Russian Nikolai. Nikolai's favorite weapons in Black Ops 1 are going to be the FAL and the HK-21, and he has a lot to say about these weapons. Ha! This is the effing falafel I like! I love this effing gun! Get it? Because <laughs> it's a effing, <laughs> you know, like, fuck. I wish I had more vodka to go with falafel. This effing FAL is good weapon, no? It's the falafel. Good for eating and shooting. FNA! I got the FNFAL! H115 Oscillator! I love this! Ossel Hater? Get it? Cause I hate them? I'm here all time. A toast to the H115! Amazing! HK goodness! Now in Black Ops 1, we got more personality and more background and more information about every single character. And one of the things that they really pushed was the interactions between each character, who likes who and who hates who. But when it comes to Nikolai, our boy really does not like Takio. Like, he roasts Takio every chance he can get. Oh crap, I really need help! I don't even if it's Takio! Why do you suck so much, Takio? Figures, our Bushido warrior left it undone. No more vodka for Takio! Oh, you don't drink. No wonder I don't like you. Takeo is quiet. That makes me suspicious and thirsty. He's up to something, like playing with that evil stuffed monkey. Eh? Do not kill me, kill Takeo! The Japanese guy! Takeo, how many times do I have to say it? No one likes you. Oh wow, Takeo got a headshot. I barely noticed since I was annihilating every other zombie ever! Get over here so I can look at you with hatred, Takio. Could we please leave Takio on the moon? Did anyone else hear something? Sounded very whiny and small and useless. Takio, they just want to hug you! I say let them. Ah, fine. We will help out the useless Bushido warrior again! Uh, sorry, Takio. I am too busy doing something over here. I really do not care about you. And when it comes to Dempsey, dude is like madly in love with them. He wants to compliment Dempsey whenever he gets the chance. He is a huge Dempsey fan. No, oh, I could hug you, American. Dempsey, I will save you. Do not worry, American. Zombies are afraid of this red menace. How dare you attack tank, hell pigs! I am on my way, Dempsey! Just as soon as I finish this shot of vodka, I will fight by your side, American! Dempsey, I like him because he's brave, like Third Wife. He's going to die one day, but he'll take many with him. I will drink to that shot, Dempsey! Hoorah, tank! Destroy them! You talk like American, but fight like Russian. That was how you say... Bad in us! <laughs> and when it comes to Richtofen, he's pretty indifferent. He really doesn't have too much to say about Richtofen. Richtofen. I don't know why he likes me so much. Maybe he's trying for a free drink. <laughs> I don't give free drinks. I don't know what Richtofen's up to, but it cannot be good for me. I hate you, Richtofen. One of the more confusing aspects of Black Ops 1 is definitely the Kino der Toten loading screen. In it, Richtofen will give you this audio log. Entry 7410, route 2-1! Perhaps this station will hold the key to the real goals of Group 935. I still do not trust my unconventional allies, but they are of great use to me. But I digress. Who would have thought the MDT was capable of time travel? How many stations does this group have? 
Maybe that little girl is the pair too. Only time will tell what new questions await us in this theater of the damn. And the audio log itself is just very, very confusing because all the questions that Richtofen ask, he pretty much knows the answer to. He acts like he doesn't know much about Group 935 or what's going on, despite him being a pretty prominent member. And he refers to the matter transference device as the MDT instead of the MTD, which I think that honestly was just like a typo and they just never caught it. And he also questions where Samantha went, despite him clearly knowing where Samantha was. So this loading screen audio is just very, very confusing. And I have two answers for why that is so. Number one, Kino was the first map in Black Ops 1 and was actually supposed to be in World at War. So Treyarch really probably didn't have everything planned out at this point. As we know from my previous video, Treyarch kind of makes the storyline up as they go and they base a lot of it off of community feedback. The community has a much bigger impact on the zombie storyline than we think. So at the beginning of Black Ops 1, these were legit questions that we all had. But as the game progressed, certain things were written a certain way. And the other explanation is, it's a good intro. Because this was the first map, this is a good introduction for the player. This is a good way to get us thinking about the storyline. It poses us the question that we should be asking ourselves. We should have questions about who Group 935 are and what their ultimate goals are. We should have questions about time travel. We should have questions on where Samantha went. And I think this is a very good way to implement those questions into our mind. This was a pretty good way to get us thinking about the story. I think they did it in a really confusing way with having Richtofen give us an audio log, but it's a very good way to get us as the players more invested and start actually thinking and asking questions about the storyline. So uh, those are my two answers for that. Now, the last thing I got for you guys in this video is one of my favorites. Did you know that zombies actually talk and one of their favorite things to talk about is the monkey bomb. If you toss a monkey bomb out, you will get this audio from the zombies. Monkey! 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 Playtime! Sam! Monkey! 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 Toy! Monkey! And before we end off this video, I have to thank a bunch of lovely Patreon supporters. We got Brian Hahn, Person Person, Fat Lucky Potato, Icy Storm, B Rad the Man, Giovanni Diaz, Jorge Burgos, Dr. Dopey, Mayall, G Daddy Smackdown, Borg, Zane Wise, and Mr. Ridgeway. Shout out to the Patreons. If you guys want videos early, make sure to check out the Patreon. Link will be in the description. And that is going to be today's video. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed. And if you guys did, make sure to hit that like button and leave a comment. Help me out with the algorithm. And second to last, hopefully you guys have a fantastic day. Again, thank you to Hawk for sponsoring this video. Check them out. Link will be down below in the description.